can't hear. We got four people already. Five. Good evening and welcome to Clergy in the Courtyard once again. Uh, let us start with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Gracious God, you have blessed us with many good things. Uh, many of the uh, people, and especially in our lives, our friends, our family. We ask uh, that you uh, always be with us, that you continue to guide us always in your ways, and that you be present with us tonight in our conversation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, I'm Father Matthew Salinchus, and thank you all for joining us again for another installment of Clergy in the Courtyard. Um, I've been here for a whole week already. It's kind of hard to believe that I've uh, been uh, spending this time uh, getting settled in and uh, starting to get to know uh, quite a few people in the area and uh, have been well received. I've, I'm quite uh, happy with um, the many people that I've gotten to get to know already. And, uh, the, uh, and even, the, even though we weren't able to have our usual kind of big uh, uh, meet and greet after uh, Sunday Masses like we would in, in years prior, but um, it, uh, nonetheless, uh, many people have uh, reached out to me and uh, I've been very grateful for that. And been getting into uh, the the rhythm of life here uh, in uh, Kasuk County and uh, over in, uh, living in West Bend. So um, this has uh, been a wonderful community to uh, to move into and uh, and uh, look forward to spending, uh, quite a bit more time in this area. So it, uh, it's uh, been a beautiful beautiful place and uh, and a lot of great uh, great people that I've been getting to know. So. I guess um, we're, uh, we're joined this evening uh, with uh, Father uh, Ed Gears as well, um, and uh, uh, Deacon Dave uh, and his wife Amy, uh, so, uh, which I just got to meet her, which is wonderful. Um, so it, um, we are, thankfully, we are blessed with a, a pleasant evening. It's not quite as a scorcher as it has been in the past. We are blessed with a, a fruitful rain today. So uh, hopefully nobody uh, had uh, too much or, uh, much damage from the high winds today. All right. Well, thank you, Father Matthew. We have sure enjoyed you being here. For those of you watching, if you have not uh, joined a mass with Father Matthew yet, he's a great homilist. So make sure you catch that. We're really lucky with him and Father Ed both. So uh, at this point, we're going to take it over to Deacon Dave and his wife, Amy. Uh, we thought it'd be nice. Uh, we've had the deacons. We've had their wives. We have not had the deacon and wife Pair, wife pair together. So uh, we've asked Dave and Amy, uh, who drew the short straw in the deacon crowd, uh, and are here with us to just kind of talk a little bit about how their relationship has grown through diaconate formation and uh, Dave's few years as a deacon now. So I'm going to turn it over to them. Yeah, so that's a great, a great topic to be able to discuss. Um, you know, early on, uh, even back into the discernment process for the diaconate, um, you know, it was it was an experience, you know, like like none other that I've ever had. And I, I think, you know, I not think I know Amy and I went through it together. You know, there was a period of time where, you know, we knew in our heart that that we, you know, the ministry I think is is both of us together, um, that we were being called to something, um, and we, you know, we became uh, catechists. 
uh, in faith formation, and, and we started working with students, and and still just felt that 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 churning, that that fire in our in our hearts. I think um, there came a time uh, on a weekend, and I, I remember this very very clearly. Um, you know, I just wasn't sure what I was feeling. You know, I wasn't sure where I was going, and and you know, our our faith was strong, and we you know bringing our, our children to mass and and you know we were really going through through the motions but we were still feeling that churning um, I remember coming in uh, and into the rectory and asking if father Ed was available and you know I had the opportunity to sit down with father Ed and I said you know I feel I feel something I feel I'm being called to something more um, I think the words I used is I, I love my my wife unconditionally I love my children um, I wouldn't ever want anything different um, but I feel maybe that I should have uh, that I was called to holy orders, and I didn't know a whole lot about the diaconate other than uh, the deacons I knew were very very holy men, Joe Straub and, and Bing McDonald and Deacon Bill, um, and Father Ed said you know at, the, at that moment he said you know I, I want you to pray on this, and we're having a um, retreat this weekend. I would like you to come to that, um, and it was the, the Living in Christ retreat is what we we're having and. So at that point, I agreed to go, and uh, I got home, and I told Amy, I said, we're going to a retreat. If I have to go, you're coming with me. Um, and we both were very, very nervous about it. Mm -hmm. uh, after that retreat, you know, we, we started getting more, um, more hints about the diaconate. Um, I had uh, Joe Straub had contacted me one day. Um, Father Ed, after the retreat, had, had brought up the diaconate. Um, and then you know I, uh, we prayed about it, prayed about it, and thought you know this is going to need to be a, a, a real obvious thing. We're going to need to hit with by a two by four because I am not a I'm not a holy man. I think anybody that, that knows me knows that I'm naughty and mischievous. Um, so you know it's gonna it's gonna need to be something a huge sign from God. Um, and uh, you know all of a sudden it, it came in the globe on a on a you know a Thursday that. There was an inquiry session for the diaconate, and we had a newborn baby. I think we shared that uh, a few weeks back. Mm -hmm. Maya was just an infant, and we thought, okay, we're gonna go check this out. And um, we walked into that room with our with our infant, and the journey began. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, you know, as incredible as the journey was, I think our our faith, our relationship, has has grown and and just strengthened from from the get go. Mm -hmm. And I think um, just not just the diaconate, I think that was our push into a little bit more into our faith, deeper into our faith. Um, I think we found ourselves just feeling that freedom to really just insert God more into our lives, our everyday lives. And so we were just able to really just um, talk about God, talk about Jesus, you know, in our everyday lives and really just... Um, made him the center of our lives and um and we even would point it out to each other and be like you know isn't this great like we never used to do this and why i wish we would have found this 10 years ago you know and um so really putting jesus at the center of our marriage was really an incredible thing to really discover and to um just uh call out you know just to be like yeah like this is a good thing this is you know, even though our lives aren't always going to be easy, it's still at least we have we have Jesus to fall back on all the time, and um, and not even just in those hard times, obviously. But um, it just made things a little bit better, and um, we could just handle things, and we just knew where to turn. So it's been good for our marriage, I think. Father Ed's telling me he has a question for oh, Dave and Amy. So. It's not a hard question, but I also want to remind everyone that's watching, you know, to bring in questions for Father Matthew, uh, Amy, and Dave, um, or for myself. But, you know, I, I think you're a bit unique. I mean, there's been a few other cases, um, but to enter the diaconate formation at such a young age, as you said, you went to the inquiry session with an infant, I guess it probably, be especially Amy, what were you thinking? I mean, it's like, are we going to be able to do this? And I, I'm, I think it was, like you said, the faith thing must have been amazing, but 
did you just have that confidence because all of a sudden it seemed like this was the thing to do or was a little fear mixed in there? Um, I think, honestly, I think I didn't really realize he was feeling something like a pull to some sort of holy orders um, until after he came home and he said, you know, I talked to father and we're going to a retreat by the way. I was like, I don't, I don't, I didn't sign up for a retreat. He's like, yeah, we're going. And so I was like, uh, I, oh, I don't know about that. And um, so then we kind of had that conversation of, you know, him telling me, I really feel like I am called to do something more. And I was like, okay, well, then I guess we have to explore that. And um, so I think it was kind of a grace of God to not really like allow me to think too much into it because honestly I don't think I even realized what all the, the diaconate entailed and stuff and so just taking my baby was well that's where we are in our life and so that's what we're doing and um it and it was fine and it was great and it was I mean it worked and it, I think it can work for other people too I don't think that you should let that be something that stops you because um it can be great and you know I always think it's easy to find excuses why not to do something um, if you try yeah <laughs> you yeah. try to find excuses so I mean I don't know maybe ignorance was bliss I don't know yeah. but I think I just knew when he told me I feel like I'm called to do something more then I was like okay then we need to do it like we need to keep going then, so yeah I think you know a Amy said you know, we're just going to go with it and and as, as, as hard as we tried to find excuses not to go um not to start formation you know our biggest excuse was you know we we have the kids and we can't go every other weekend every other saturday we have four children and one of them is an infant and um and amy's still nursing so how are we going to do this and uh deacon lopez uh, is in charge of formation said oh we have daycare we have daycare. So, I mean, he completely took that excuse right out from under us. So every everything that we threw out there that was going to be our excuse, there was immediately an answer for it. And then it was, you know, that first day we walked in and it was, you know, it was like that, that first day of class or the first day of work when you walk in and, you know, everybody's sizing each other up. You know, what are, what are they wearing? What are they looking like? Um, you know, everybody had that same nervousness about them. But I remember um, making eye contact with uh, another now deacon's wife, Mary Higgins, from early, and she made eye contact with me, rolled her eyes at me, and I thought, yes, she's thinking the same thing I am. What are we doing? <laughs> um, and we've became we've become quite close. And um, you know, then a little bit later that day, I looked over at Deacon Dan Goble, uh, and he had young children when he started as well. So. Um, you know, some really good examples to, to, to follow with. And even uh, Deacon Lopez, uh, his children, he has three children, and they're all about the same age as ours. So, um, you know, it was all, you know, truly, it's, it's a God thing. Let God. Yeah. So we have, you're talking about your children in, in that part of formation. And so someone asked, how has uh, the pandemic or the crisis uh, going on made you better parents, do you think? Or how has it maybe changed your view of parenting. Um, hmm. I think I don't I don't know about the parenting part, but I think we've taken the advantage of having more family time. So we're like, you know, we're going. Let's make meals together. Let's sit down for meals more often. Um, we've had more family game nights and um, that sort of thing. And so I think it really has just allowed us to um, have that family time more and to just talk. More. I think we both have discovered that we are not teachers. Right. Um, you know, we don't, either one of us have a desire to do that. And, you know, <laughs> so, you know, God bless your teachers, Jake, uh, and everybody else that teaches. You are, you are true saints. Um, but I, I think Amy's right. You know, the the ability to, to get to know get to know our kids. You know, I, I had said this a few weeks back when we first started doing this. You know, the ability to get to know our children, you know, at... Um, you know, before the pandemic started, you know, I was really focusing on work and, and ministry and youth ministry, trying to um, trying to develop a, a successful youth ministry program, watching it grow, and and you know, uh, trying to prove that we knew what we were doing. 
we don't have a clue. Um, but uh, the pandemic has given us an opportunity to truly get to know our kids. And, you know, like I said, uh, you know, they're funny, they're charming, they're sweet. You know, it's, it's just been a gift. It has. All right, we have a question for Father Matthew. So, Father Matthew, how has the virus affected your attitude of gratitude? Oh, man. Uh, well, it, it's definitely tried it in new ways, that's for sure. Um, because the, the difficult thing is, well, so much of what I was used to being able to do uh, to just what I would do day to day with being, being with people, going to visit people, seeing kids at school, uh, people who would come for mass and, you know, just all of those things, uh, suddenly all of that was gone, um, you know, basically overnight. And so, uh, in, in a certain sense, yeah, it was, it was, it became a little bit more difficult to be able to, uh, get up in the morning and say, yeah, I'm, I'm really grateful for all of the things I'm going to do today because all of a sudden I didn't have the usual things that I'd gotten used to doing as a priest. Um, so then it became, uh, you know, an exercise and, uh, and really an act of prayer to be able to say, yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of difficult things that are going on right now. There's, there's, uh, uh, you know, people are, people are frustrated. People are out of work. People are not able to do the things that they're all used to doing, but there's still something good that can come out of this. There's still ways that I can still be a priest. There's still ways that I can still minister, even if it doesn't exactly look um, the way it did before. Um, and so it, it it took a little while um, to kind of reach into some of that creativity and and uh, you know to be able to to be able to say, yeah, this is this is still a good day. You know that there's there's still good that is being done. Um, one of the things that struck me uh, early on, just as an example, within those first uh, couple of weeks of when we started our lockdown in uh, our, you know, our, uh, you know, kind of our, when most things were closed, you know, during uh, uh, the end of uh, March there, that even though we were physically distanced from each other, that suddenly it was this time where we were hearing about people who were suddenly starting to get in contact with others um, because it forced all of us to, to slow down um, because we're so used to being busy all the time. We're, there's always something more that, that we could be doing, something more that needs to be done. Um, and then all of a sudden our usual routine was gone. Um, and so it, it brought into a different focus, not just what was going on with me and my things, but, oh, but what about my estranged brother or sister, or what about uh, my grandma or grandfather that I haven't talked to in a year or two? And suddenly those relationships were starting to come back into focus for a lot of people. Um, and that was one of the things that really struck me that I was able to be grateful for um, when all of this business started to happen. Well, that's a great answer, Father Matthew, and it leads right into our next question for Father Ed. Um, so, Father Ed, how has the pandemic made you more aware of the basic needs of others? Well, these questions are getting deep. <laughs> well, I tell you what, we've, you know, we've got another pair of deacon and uh, deacon's wife hanging out, monitoring our prayer hour, and they're just, they're sending in some zingers. Can I say something first and then remind of the question? Um, yes, Father, you're the pastor. You can do whatever you would like. <laughs> I, I want us to not miss miss the lessons from uh, Amy and Dave's uh, kind of witness. Um, two major things, I think. And so we in religious language always say, always say we need to do the will of God. If we do the will of God, that's where we're going to be happiest. We're going to be most fulfilled. Now, they didn't use that language exactly, but they kept talking about some kind of promptings were happening and they looked into this and that, looked for excuses not to do those things. But once they decided, like Amy said, it was, well, this is what we're gonna do. And look where it's got them. And I would say they would, I bet they have no regrets no. that we should have never done this, never. They would never say something like that. 
doing the will of God always is the best thing to do. And we do get sidetracked a lot with these other concerns. Well, I don't have time or I can't do this, can't do that. So just really want you to kind of focus on that. The other thing is, that's what we try to do with our family formation program is the other thing is, uh, and this is for all of our families, not just the ones that go to public school, but for Gary as well, to be involved, that you have a program that you can have quality time with your kids. Sit around, it's not always easy, but talk about things that matter. Um, and so that's the beauty of family formation, family time. And it's been very kind of hard for families, I think, because they have been so busy. I just hope and pray we can hang on to this, this value of family time and not let whatever it is that's pulling us a hundred different ways to get back at us and pull us apart again. Um, just please hang on to family family time and how important that is. Okay, what was the question again? <laughs> how has the pandemic made you more aware of the basic needs of others? Why, I think again, kind of culturally, we're not, that's not overall the situation, but we've gotten pretty individualistic and think we can get along on our own and do what we want and do what we can. But I think this is uncovering a basic human need is we need to be with people and uh, we need community. And I think people are really missing that when they're getting isolated, can't get out. and. Of course, we do all do that in our own different ways. But again, maybe it's a value that we're not paying attention enough to this community, and whether it be the parish, of course, our families are the, you know, the basic foundation of community. But to realize it's to live in this world today and to do it well, we need to do it together. And so community is really a major, major need for people. And I've, I've heard, I don't know how many times, I think a wonderful development of like older siblings like mine, uh, you know, or they're living across the country or something. Uh, many of them established a, a habit of, of Zooming once a week or every two weeks, and they've been connected in ways they've never been connected before. Again, the need for connection and, be, and being with people. All right, thank you, Father. We have another question for Father Matthew. Uh, this is an easier one. So, do you prefer to be called Father Matthew or Father Matt or Father Salentius? Oh, well, I guess um, I'll, I'm happy with either my first name or my last name. Uh, um, I'm, I'm perfectly used to uh, hearing uh, Father Matthew because I know uh, especially my last name can be a little intimidating to pronounce, especially if you're just seeing it in print. Um, but either my first name or last name is fine. Um, uh, I do have a preference, though, for my full first name. So uh, if, uh, you know, Father Matthew is, uh, uh, I definitely prefer that over Father Matt. So. All right. Well, thank you, Father Matthew. That's a good question. Deacon Dave, do you prefer to be called Deacon Dave or Deacon David? Or, I mean, what's your, what's your go-to title? You know, that's tough because I get called different things everywhere I go. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, I guess uh, Deacon Dave is fine. You know, that. Yeah, I, David is fine. I, I accept that as well. So I get called names a lot. So uh, uh, preferably Dave, David, or Deacon David. All right. So, yeah, thank you. Well, so Father Ed, when I went to seminary, I'm used to calling you Father Ed, and, and all of our priests down there, they like to be called by their last names. So do you have a preference over Father Ed or Father Gears? I definitely have a preference for my first name, Father Ed. Um, I remember Father Tim Friedrichson talking about this. You know, that's my baptismal name, and I like using my baptismal name you know i share gears with my whole family of course but it's not my baptismal name and that's my biggest identity i i like that um, i prefer i would not prefer edward as father edward, but, or eddie oh. <laughs> some of my siblings call me <laughs> okay well so we're kind of winding down so uh this week everyone we decided to save our business till the end, so Father Ed's going to give us a little bit of an update on some things, so I will let him do that. Okay, first off, just know um, and spread the word. I think some people actually don't know we're, we're back to mass, public mass. Um, 
our numbers have really been quite small and the people that have come have said they felt very safe. They probably feel safer coming to church than they do going to hy V or I'm not, that's not against hy V. I I mean, just in terms of being <laughs> on the public, you get in trouble there. <laughs> uh, fair way to, no, but wherever they go uh, in public places that we really being, we're following the protocols and people feel safe. So um, we started weekday masses this week, had a little mix up in the scheduling, made one schedule, published another one, but we will be on track next week and consistent. We have two masses at each of our four parishes um, and they are correct on our social media and parish app and the like. And the, the difference this coming week is we will have the church open one hour before each of those masses, whether it's an evening mass or the morning mass. So like at 530 we'll have the church open at 430 if you want to come to pray in the morning 7 a.m. and you can come and stop and make a visit and leave. If you come just for a visit and can't stay for Mass, we just ask you to put the kneeler down where you were at and then that way someone else coming in realizes they don't want to sit in that spot. Um, but that'll be for this coming week. I think a really big thing happened in the last couple of weeks. Um, we haven't probably communicated enough about our brothers and sisters in Haiti, our twin parish. Um, they have not had a lot of COVID cases, but they've done a lot of education preparation uh, for it. Uh, but the ramifications of the virus around the world has affected them with shortages of food, and they had some droughts and things like that. And so um, there has been some hunger issues. So we had someone step forward uh, from our area and gave a gift of $10,000 just for hunger relief. The Parish Families Against Hunger had already given 10,000, that's from all of our parishes working together, but this is a single individual donor and a program popped up almost simultaneously from the uh, organization called Food for the Poor that would match gifts. So that donor's $10,000 was matched with another 10 and we have $20,000 worth of food being shipped to our twin parish. And Monsignor Goose doesn't have to take it all at the same time, uh, so that's really good. He can, because there's always the, with food shortages, the danger of theft and violence, so he, he can take it in, in bits and pieces as, as he needs it. So really, really grateful for that donor that, um, and just remind people if you have uh, the Lenten boxes still, if you do come to church, bring those with you and just leave them at the, at the front door. We are very, very short for our Educated Child fundraiser from the Lenten boxes. It could be we just don't have it all back yet. Um, and so just encourage you, if you can, to continue to support our Twin Parish. Um, we have a lot of advantages here to, to manage the virus and its consequences that they don't have. So just encourage you to continue to support them. So, Father, we have a question. Um, when will the Adoration Chapel be open? And then also, uh, could we go back to using the spiritual communion prayer at Masses for those who are not able to attend? Yes, I think when we, uh, we had that prayer in our binders, when we only had two Masses a weekend, and we, not, we just kind of forgot to get that in place everywhere. So that's a good reminder. We'll try to do that. We have not heard anything from the diocese yet about the Adoration uh, chapels um, so that's still an unknown also what are your thoughts on the fall festival gathering and different parish events like that so according to the governor we can do things like that um, but I actually asked that question today uh, to our COVID task force and it was in the zoom meeting with the bishop saying like for KC meetings yes you can have them um, Yes, you can have a meal if you do it correctly, but you only when you can guarantee correct social distancing. So really the diocese is kind of recommending not doing a whole lot of those things. Uh, the fall, some of the fall festival leaders have been in contact with me. I think they're gonna do some fundraisers, but it won't actually be the kind of event that we've been used to because it'd be just too difficult 
to be safe in terms of social distancing, wearing masks and the like. All right, so we're almost out of time. So before closing prayer, I'll just share this one one comment. Uh, Father Ed, your sister Carol would like you to know that she didn't realize you didn't like being called Eddie. So she, uh, <coughs> so she would just like you to know that. All right, so. Well, siblings, it's okay. Okay, so there, Carol, you have permission since you're siblings. So. Are we considered brothers then? Oh, what was that, Deacon Dave? I guess. I want to know if we're brothers. I won't. <laughs> All right, so. Uh, with that, we're going to close with prayer. And I think Deacon Dave is, is the one who wants to do that. All right, he really wants to. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Gracious God, we thank you for the blessings that you have, you have shared upon us. For the time that we've had here together this evening, for the laughs that we've shared. Um, Heavenly Father, I, I thank you tremendously for for my spouse, Amy, for her support um, for our children, the, the gift that, that a true sacramental marriage is. So Lord, I, I pray that you, um, you continue to share those blessings uh, and you share those blessings with everybody, uh, everybody else. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. We uh, would like to say a special thank you to Deacon Dave and his wife Amy, uh, Father Ed, our pastor, and our associate pastor, Father Matthew. Uh, just remember, uh, as the week goes on, if you have any ideas for things you want us to talk about, just call into the office. Uh, if you would happen to call in this week, a, a nice young gentleman will be answering the phone. So uh, let us know. I hope everyone has a great evening.